Does your Agile team use user stories to develop products, but can't quite seem to get it right? If so, check out this tutorial on user stories and acceptance criteria. You don't want to miss it. Hey, Doc Squad, Dr. White here with the Business Analysis Doctor. Today, I'm giving you a tutorial on user stories and acceptance criteria and best practices on both. But before we get started, if you want more business analysis training and tips, be sure to subscribe to the page and turn on the notification bell. With that said, let's get started. All right, so user stories and acceptance criteria, one of the most common ways of requirements documentation in agile environments. So you typically always want your user stories to be from the perspective of the user or the customer versus the system or the developer. So let's look at the definition of our user story. A user story is a small, concise statement of functionality or quality needed to deliver value to a specific user. It represents requirements in agile or hybrid environments. A user story is also a tool used for sizing and estimation. The typical user story asks who, what, and why. The main components of user stories typically include what we call the three C's, which includes cards, conversations, and confirmation. The cards are the physical or electronic medium in which the stories are written, right? So if we are writing them on sticky notes, or if we're writing them electronically in a project management software like Jira or TSF, this is the card. The conversations are the discussions required to create a shared understanding of that story. User stories themselves typically are high level and don't provide enough information for everyone to be on the same page. So this is where we start collaboration and start having those discussions we need to outline what we're going to be looking for for our confirmation. And then the confirmation is the defined acceptance criteria that confirms if the deliver item satisfies the need. The most popular syntax for user stories is formally called the Conextra format. It typically includes the role, the feature, and the value, which is better known as the who, what, and the why. So the role or the who is the user or the customer. The feature or the what is a necessary action, behavior, or quality. And the value or the why is the benefit received by the user when the story is implemented. Now let's look at each of these components in greater detail. So our role or persona is typically written as an as a fragment, for example, as a customer service rep. It tells us who will use and benefit from the story feature. It can represent an individual or a group. It also helps to allocate the stories to stakeholders. It really determines who should write the story or from whose perspective we need to consider. One thing to note is that using user as a role is a common mistake. This is only acceptable for a feature that will apply to all users that interact with the solution and does not need a distinguished user type. So for example, like a login or something of that nature. You always want to have a specific role, persona, or actor so that we know who this story is for. Now let's look at the feature or the what. The feature is written as an I want fragment. For example, as a customer service rep, I want to see incoming calls. This tells us what the user needs or needs to be able to do. It can be a function, behavior, or quality. And it really describes the need or requirement to be delivered. So one thing to note here is that providing too much detail or granularity when describing the feature is a common mistake. Focus on the what, not the how. Then we have our value or why. This is typically written as a so that fragment. For example, as a customer service rep, I wanna see incoming call details so that 
I can greet callers by their first name. This tells the benefit or goal of the feature. It also helps with prioritization and ranking, and it determines the outcome of the delivered item. So one thing to consider here is that this component may be considered optional for the development team members only. However, it must be included initially as business stakeholders must have a clear understanding of the value of each story. Now let's talk about some user story best practices. You always wanna make the roles or personas specific. Be sure to keep your user stories focused on the customer. Keep the language simple and avoid technical jargon. And when you're dealing with the overall product backlog, don't try to make every product backlog or PBI a user story. There's gonna be other backlog items such as tasks, spikes, or epics. Another best practice is to always have a structured refinement process. This is typically done in preparation to your iteration planning sessions. And always have some form of acceptance criteria, which we'll talk about shortly. And the last best practice is to include supporting documentation when needed. This might be wireframes, models, or diagrams. Now let's take a closer look at acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria define the boundaries of a user story and can help the team understand what the solution needs to provide in order to deliver value to the stakeholders. Acceptance criteria define the user story scope and reduce ambiguity by decomposing that user story and letting us know when the user story is complete. It also outlines the acceptance test for the user story and it can prevent mid-iteration scope creep. Acceptance criteria also facilitate story pointing and estimating. Typically, it can be very difficult to size or point a story if you don't have the acceptance criteria to let you know what's involved. Now, what does acceptance criteria include? You should typically have functional criteria, non-functional criteria, and performance criteria. Your functional criteria identifies specific user tasks, functions, or business processes that must be in place. Non-functional criteria identify the specific non-functional conditions the implementation must meet, such as security elements. And for performance criteria, if specific performance is critical to the acceptance of the user story, it should be included as well. This is often measured as a response time and could be spelled out as a threshold. There's generally two types of acceptance criteria, rule-based and scenario-based. So our rule-based are much more straightforward, they're driven by policy or business rules, and they're best suited for data-driven information or calculations. Whereas scenario-based acceptance criteria usually illustrates or narrates each criterion and it outlines various use cases. It's typically best suited for behavior-driven outcomes. Now let's look at each of these individually. So for the rule-based acceptance criteria, the verification checklist is a guide for the more technical or data-heavy stories. This is usually verifying that something displays, verifying that something is correct, that something is complete, that the order is correct, verifying that a user can do some function or that something happens or that something does not happen. So here's an example of a rule-based acceptance criteria. For the user story, as a teacher, I want to generate student assessment reports so that I can evaluate each student's performance. The acceptance criteria might be, once the report is generated, verify the following verify a student's current assessment score is displayed, verify that a past assessment score of the student is displayed, and also verify that an option to print, save, or share is provided. Now let's look at the scenario-based acceptance criteria. The given when-then format, or formally the Gherkin syntax, 
is a template intended to guide the writing of behavioral driven acceptance tests for the user story. The syntax includes a given, when, and a then. The given is a precondition that should be true in order for the scenario to initiate. The when is an action that is carried out by the user or an outside system. And the then is the expected result of the action being carried out. Now let's look at a scenario-based example. So for a user story, as a sign-in reader, I want to comment on a blog post so that I can get feedback on issues I have. The acceptance criteria might include, given I am signed into my account, when I scroll to the bottom of the blog, then the system displays the comment section below the blog post with the list of added comments and displays an add a comment option. All right, so now let's look at some best practices for acceptance criteria. Typically, each story should have at least one set of acceptance criteria, generally three to five statements, but no more than eight defined tests. If you have more than eight acceptance tests, the story may need to be split into separate stories. Also, you wanna have a clear true false or pass fail result and always focus on the end result, not the how. Also, you want to be sure to provide examples when possible. And the acceptance criteria may be written by team members, but the product owner or customer definitely needs to be the one to verify and accept them. Well, there you have it, folks. These are the things you need to know for clear and high quality user stories. If you learned something new, tell me about it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. And also be sure to check out all of the business analysis training resources we have available for you on the website at thebeagdoc.com. That's www.thebeagdoc.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a productive and prosperous day and I'll see you next time. Bye now.